Hello guys, in this video I want to show you the differences between RDP and VNC, including the performance differences. For testing, the VNC and RDP server will be running inside of a container and everything will run on my local machine. So we will test the best scenario use case with no network latency. The container that will be running will be an Ubuntu image with a full Ubuntu GNOME desktop installed. We will build the image from scratch from a Docker file. You can find the Docker file down in the description so you can build it yourself. And at the end of the video, I will briefly walk you through it so you know what's going on and how things are set up. If you're interested how to run Ubuntu Budgie in a Docker container or Kubuntu, Lubuntu and even the Maui shell in a Docker container, then you can check out my previous video. The link should be somewhere up there or down in the description. Down in the description you can also find all the necessary links as well as the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. Let's start with the key difference between RDP and VNC. When you are connecting using RDP to a remote session, it will basically create a new session for this user. If the user session already exists, you will take over the session. Basically, you will always have one session per user. For RDP, you need a real user on that machine. That's why you need a username and password, because you're logging in as that user. With VNC you don't have a user, you are sharing a session with an existing user. The only thing you need is a VNC server password which can be different from the user password that's currently logged in. And with that password the VNC server will start sharing the session from the current logged in user with you. So you will be like a guest on the system, both you and the current user will be able to control the mouse and see the current screen. Basically with RDP you are logging in and with VNC you are sharing. Let's see this in action, let's build the image and let's start the container. Here is the docker file with both VNC and RDP. Now let's go to terminal, new terminal. Make sure you're in the right folder and write docker build-t, the name of the image. I will call it docker-vnc-rdp and a dot for the current folder and enter build. Now this can take some time. All right, image is ready. Here it is in docker desktop, let's run it and here Let's map the port 3389, the default RDP port, to the local host. And also let's map the port 5902, which is the current VNC port, and run. Container is running. Now let's see how we can connect to it. First let's use RDP. So start remote desktop connection. This tool right here, you can find it on any Windows system by default. And we will connect through local host to the container. That's why we mapped the ports. And let's connect. We trust. Now this is the XRDP login screen, XRDP is the RDP server running on Linux and as you can see we need a username and a password so we will log in as this user. My user is called test user and the password, okay. And now I'm logged in as the test user, as you can see this is a fresh Ubuntu install, let's skip this and let's check the user, who am I? I'm the test user. Now open another remote desktop connection and try to connect to the same session. Now what will happen if I try to connect as the same user? And as you can see it kicked me out from the other session because you can have only one session. Now let's try VNC. I will leave this one running. I will use tight VNC. You can find the download link in the description. And let's connect to localhost and the port 5902. Connect. And now the VNC password which has nothing to do with the user password. Okay. All right, I'm in. And now I connect it to an existing user session. Let's click this away, make it full screen. And let's check the user, who am I? Now this is the session from the test user, but it's not the same session as we had previously in RDP. So those sessions are different, although the user is the same. That only means that the user is logged in two times. Now let's try to connect again to the VNC session with a second connection. Connect. Again, the VNC password. And now this time, I'm actually inside the same session. This test user session is shared with all VNC clients and all clients can control the mouse. Now let's check the performance difference between RDP and VNC. I will close this session, move RDP to the left and VNC to the right. First let's try RDP, let's move the window around. So as you can see it is a bit lagging. And now the same thing over here, VNC. This feels much smoother. Again, RDP, VNC. You can definitely tell the difference. Let's try to open home. All right, and VNC. 
You can see a bit window tearing, but the performance is still better. Now VNC clearly wins this simple test, but this doesn't mean that RDP is bad. This one is running at the highest possible quality, which means that you will get the same look as if you are on the real machine. The VNC image quality should be worse than the RDP image quality, but to be honest I don't really see the difference here, at least not on this monitor that I'm using. But I'm definitely seeing a performance difference. Let's try RDP with different settings. Now under remote connection you have show options and under display, as you can see it is set to highest quality. Now let's set this one to true color for instance. And then under experience, let's set this one to the lowest setting so everything is just unchecked. And also let's uncheck the persistent bitmap caching. And let's try to connect now. Test user and the password. Now it kicked me out here. Let's move this to the left. Let's see if the performance is now any better. A bit. VNC still wins. You can try to turn the settings down even more. Or there is also another option. Let's connect again. And now here on the session you have a few more options. For instance XVNC, which means you will get a kind of a hybrid. RDP for connection, but at the back end it will create a VNC session for you. A new VNC session by the way. So this one will not interfere with the existing VNC session. So let's try this one. VNC and test user. Password, okay. All right, I'm in. And this time, as you can see, it didn't kick me out here, which means that this one created a third session. And that means that the test user is logged in three times. I think this is only possible on Linux. I don't think you can do stuff like this on Windows. First, let's see the difference between the hybrid session and the real RDP session. Move this to the right. Let's close everything and see the opening speed. Home, all right, home. Looks the same. Move this one around. Alright, move this one around. Kind of the same. It is a bit smoother, actually. Again. Just a tiny bit smoother. So I would call this hybrid a winner. Now let's try it against the real VNC. Well, you know who the winner is. VNC all the way. So we could go lower with the settings here at the expense of image quality. You can try it out if you want. Now to conclude. For this use case, VNC was the clear winner. It performed much better. But would it perform the same if you try it out on a real remote machine over the internet? Maybe. It depends. You will need to try it out. Now let's take a look at the Docker file and how everything is set up. As said, you can find the docker file down in the description and try it out yourself. Now let's go through this. I'm using the Ubuntu image, this release in particular. In some previous video where I showed Ubuntu, I couldn't log out from the session. This is fixed here. Then I'm updating repositories, installing Ubuntu desktop, XRDP and Tiger VNC standalone server. And just in case installing sudo, because it can happen that sudo is not installed for some reason. And then this one is necessary to run the GNOME terminal because we need to generate the encodings and then update them and this fixes the GNOME terminal. Then I'm defining a user, test user, and then 1234 will be the password of this user and I will also use the same password for the VNC connection for simplicity. So here I'm adding the new user with the password, I'm adding the user to the sudo group and I'm also setting the default user shell to bash. Then... In order to run a desktop session, we need to export some environment variables and I'm saving those exports into a script under slash env and I'm just changing the permission of the script to read and execute. The next line is only RDP relevant. I'm copying the created script slash env to the user's home directory as dot xsessionrc file. I'm actually injecting this code to the start wmsh script which will run for every user that connects over RDP. Then the next part, all of this here is VNC related. This part is just setting the VNC password, nothing special. And this here is the VNC X session startup script, X startup. So this script should start the X session, not the VNC session, but the X session. So the desktop environment, so to say. And as you can see here, I'm sourcing the same script slash ENV. So here I also need to set the same environment variables. And then the next part is the actual VNC server startup script. 
So I'm starting the VNC server as the defined user, as the test user. So that means this session will be shared. Here I'm defining the port 5902 and also some other quality settings. And then the only thing left is to expose the ports. 3389, this is the default RDP port. And the 5902, this is the set VNC port. And at the end, I'm starting a few services that we need for a desktop environment. I'm starting DBus, systemd login D, XRDP, and the VNC server, which is this script right here. So this script actually starts the user session because as I said, you need an existing session if you want to connect over VNC. For RDP, the sessions will be created as you connect. And at the end, I'm just starting the best shell so the container stays in the loop and waits for incoming connections. And that's about it. You can try it out. Leave a comment down below which one do you prefer, VNC or RDP. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, if you like my content, then give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me. It makes the channel grow. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.